As you know, February is Black History Month, and today we're continuing to look at historic sites in our state that are now sharing narratives about enslaved people who helped to make North Carolina. Wanda Stark once again takes us to a site in Washington County. Wanda, hmm. what'd you find? Well, it's called Somerset Place. Originally, it included more than 100,000 acres and became one of the South's most prosperous rice, corn, and wheat plantations. Today, the site features several reconstructed buildings that offer a view of 19th century life at Somerset. On the surface, it is a grand and beautiful place nestled along the northern shore of Lake Phelps. But Somerset is a ghost of its former self, a piece of history with a haunting and not so pretty past. Somerset Place was the third largest slaveholding plantation in the state of North Carolina. The plantation existed from 1785 to 1865. Karen Hayes first started working at Somerset Place 20 years ago. She remembers her first day on the job. When I first visited Somerset Place, um, once I stepped out of the car, it was very emotional for me. It kind of, um, you know, it's one of those upset stomach type of um, emotions. This is a place where 861 enslaved people labored over 80 years, where no one was granted freedom until the end of the Civil War. A place where some dared to run away, but were always captured. Somerset was first owned by three men known as the Lake Company, but Josiah Collins soon became the sole owner. A canal six miles long, 20 feet wide, played a vital role at Somerset and was used to operate saw and grist mills. The canal itself was dug from 1786 to 1788. It was dug by enslaved labor from the 80 enslaved people that were brought directly from the west coast of Africa. This is a reconstructed one-room slave home. Most of the enslaved people lived in houses like this, nine people crowded into one room. Children slept on the floor. The fireplace was used for heating and cooking in the winter. They were issued three and a half pounds of salted pork per hand per week, meal, flour, rice, and molasses. But they supplemented their diets with fish from the lake, um, trapping small animals like rabbits and raccoons. Vegetables were grown in patches behind the house. Slavery was a profitable institution with black lives here at one point valued at over $142,000. The value of enslaved females determined by the number of offspring. Sookie Davis was purchased for 60 pounds in 1786. Sookie Davis, who had 131 direct descendants, was considered a quote, major investment to the landowner and a matriarch in the enslaved community. So she would teach them things, what to do and what not to do. Don't go inside of the owner's compound, uh, complete your chores as a sign, um, things of that sort for their safety, uh, for survival. A slave hospital on site was critical to survival on the plantation, where living in close quarters put enslaved people at greater risk for infectious disease. Medical treatment covered everything from malaria to broken bones to toothaches. I mentioned tooth extractions. That would have taken place here with the, the tooth key and the tooth pliers. Painful reminders of a hard life. One woman treated here after she tried to run away was captured and held overnight in stocks as punishment. While well, the weather became extremely cold, her feet froze and um, amputation was required to save her life. There were whippings here. That was one of the punishments within the slave community, um, being whipped by the overseer, being placed in the stock and being sold. Life at Somerset changed forever during the Civil War when the Collins family fled to Hillsborough. But they left behind some of the elderly ones and the ones that were too ill to travel. And there were threats that were made against Josiah Collins that if he returned after the Civil War, that they would attempt to kill him. When slavery ended, the Collins family lost the property. It was restored and reopened as a state historic site in 1969. Well, several of the descendants of the enslaved people at Somerset Place have gathered for reunions at the site. The stories of their ancestors are told in a book by Dorothy Spruill Redford, Generations of Somerset Place, From Slavery to Freedom. 
And Wanda, we heard the site director telling you about how emotional it was for her the first day she went to that property. I imagine that's the case for a lot of people. Yeah, it's really a haunting experience standing mm. there on those grounds, especially when you think about the hundreds of people who work there, not one not one successfully escaped. I will say that the woman who was held captive in, in the stocks, mm -hmm. um, feet amputated, mm -hmm. she did survive and eventually was released after slavery ended. Oh, mm. wow. Yeah, but um, another thing that I guess that we should consider too is that um, Karen Hayes told me that a lot of people are moved to tears. Uh, she has some people start the tour and then stop saying that they can't continue. Mm -hmm. She also told me the story of a former Klansman who came for a tour. An older black woman volunteered to take him around the site, and at the end, he thanked her and hugged her. Wow. Hmm. Profound for sure. Yeah. Important reporting, Wanda. We appreciate it very much. Absolutely.